All right, happy Monday. We're back again. This is our algebra for this week. These lessons are going to be a little bit shorter. Um, and if you want to get out your algebra packet for the week, you'll be able to follow along with me. So we're going to do a YouTube lesson every day to kind of show you the skill. And then we're going to model and practice just like we normally do. Now, I didn't assign the Khan Academy lessons, but if you go online, you can add on my courses, you can add Khan Academy. I didn't want to confuse you because I knew you also had your fifth grade Khan Academy in there. And I do want you to focus mostly on those skills, but I know you guys like to stretch your brains. So if you want to do the Khan Academy, I highly, highly recommend it. It's really quick and easy. It's just like the other Khan Academy um, units, courses, where you have little mini lessons with videos and then the quizzes and then also a unit test. And you're welcome to work on that at your own pace. Um, for those of you that pick things up really quickly, want a challenge, um, that would be awesome. And maybe we can come up with a way to celebrate if you complete portions of the course. I'd love to do something like that as well. Maybe I can send you a gift certificate for ice cream, something like that if you complete the um, algebra lessons that, that we talk about. So I listed the algebra lessons in there, but those are optional for you to work on. Another thing that's a little bit different is we were focused just on algebra. But you guys have almost covered all the algebra standards for sixth grade. And so we're going to focus, we're going to backtrack a little bit, and we're going to do the sixth grade pre-algebra standards. These are all the things that you need to understand before you move forward into more advanced algebra for seventh and eighth grade. And so we're going to be kind of picking up, it's still algebra, but it's called pre-algebra. And it's going to piggyback on a lot of the stuff that you've already learned with fractions and with decimals especially today, this week. It's all going to be related to your fraction and decimal work for fifth grade. There's also at the end of each week, just like I do in my other subjects, there's going to be an elastic assessment. It'll be on for a couple of weeks, so if you need some time to catch up, you're always welcome to do that. All right, so here we go. Our lessons are going to take the same format every day. So we're going to start with a YouTube model lesson. We're going to do a little bit of spiral review problems, and those are going to be algebraic with positive and negative numbers. We're going to have our guided lesson and then your practice. And then, of course, I'm recommending that you work on Khan Academy. All right, so our standard today, what we're focusing on today is I can identify positive and negative numbers as opposites and place them on a number line. And I can perform all my operations, so that's addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division with negative numbers. And we worked on this a little bit, but definitely um, we need a cement in that learning. So we're going to start with a little bit of work on our positive and negative numbers. And then the Khan Academy, if you type in sixth grade math, you're going to look for the section that says number opposites and comparing negative numbers. And when you find that, if you download the course, you just click on it and it puts it in your dashboard. And then when you click on this, it's going to have little sub skills, which are just like the ones that I put in there for fifth grade. So I'm going to go ahead and mark this. And we're going to start with our lesson 2.1 and 2.2. This is from a worksheet. It's from a book called Spectrum Algebra. And we're going to go over our positive and negative numbers and how we find those, and then we're going to use this to start every one of our days. So if you notice that the start of every day is a spiral review. I did go ahead and put a Friday in here. This is actually what we're going to do the day we get back. So you can go ahead and work ahead if you want to, or you can go ahead and save it for the Monday when we get back. All right, here we go. So positive and negative numbers. So a couple things I wanted to remind you of. And these are like our guided notes. So if you want to write these down on a piece of paper or on the back of one of your papers, that would be great too. So we have our positive and negative numbers, and these are called integers. It's the fancy mathematical word for it. That's all the positive and negative numbers that are whole numbers. No decimals, no fractions. And they're always exactly the same distance from zero. So one, the opposite of one, is negative one. And it is exactly the same amount of space from zero. 
So if we count right, we are getting bigger. And if we count left from zero, we're getting smaller. And you can use a number line to solve these problems. So for instance, if you had five, and then you are going to subtract seven, you would start at five and then go back seven. And you would end up at negative two. If you were at negative five and you were going to add seven, you would start at negative five. Add tells me to go right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But if I was at negative one and I wanted to go negative four, which means left, I would go one, two, three, four, and I would end up at negative five. All right, so adding and subtracting is pretty simple. The other way we thought of this is a debt. So we thought of this as if I have $5 and then I owe seven, now I owe two. Or if I owe five and then someone gives me seven, I'm left with two. Money is a great way to think about positive and negative numbers. If I owe one and then I owe four more, now I owe five. So we can think about our number line and move right with positive numbers and left with negative numbers. Or we can think of money and what do we owe someone. And then our final way that we thought about it was with a thermometer. So if you remember on a thermometer, it's just a vertical number line, an up and down number line. And it's the same thing. So positive 10, negative 10. Same distance from zero. Positive 20, negative 20. Same distance from zero. All right. Our last thing was, so this is addition and subtraction. We got that. That was pretty easy. But our last one is multiplication and division. And we said, I gave you the little trick. And this is how I learned it. But then we're going to do a model. We're going to use our counter so we can see why. So um, I learned it was if you have same signs. So multiplying two positive numbers, multiply two negative numbers, it is going to be positive. And if you divide two positive numbers or divide two negative numbers, it's going to be positive. All right, so let's test it out. Let's test it out. I'm gonna use my counters. If I can get my baggie open. Okay, so I'm gonna do, I have three groups of two dollars. This is positive and positive because it doesn't say negative. So I have three, let's do yellow, for meaning red will have red be negative because it's like you owe money. Stop, you owe money. All right, so if I have three, oops, groups of two, I have six. Three groups of two. 
if I have three groups three times two is six what is a negative negative the opposite of a negative positive all right but now let's look at if you have opposite signs so we're going to start if you have a positive or a negative, or a positive and a negative, and it doesn't matter which direction it is. So, oops. It could be negative times positive, positive times negative, either one. Different signs. And their answer is going to be negative. All right, so this was undoing a debt undoing a debt a negative negative all right so now we're going to do two groups of negative three and if i owe three dollars to two people now i owe six dollars if I owe two groups of three dollars now I owe six dollars So if you want to think about it in terms of money, think of a negative negative as undoing a sign, undoing a debt. And then all the other ones make pretty much sense. I owe $3 in two groups. I owe $2 in three groups. Whichever way you do it, you still owe $6. All right, so we're going to do a little bit of work on our spiral review. If we run out of time, we'll pick it up tomorrow. So we are on lesson 2.1. Integers are the set of whole numbers and their opposites. Positive integers are greater than zero. Negative integers are less than zero. And the smaller one is always to the left on the number line. So this is a greater debt. All right, the opposite of four is negative four because they're both four spaces from zero. The sum of two positive integers is positive because we're just moving right on the number line. The sum of two negative integers is negative because we're moving left on the number line. When you're finding the sum of two integers with different signs, you have to find their absolute values. Well, the absolute value is marked like this, and the absolute value is this distance from zero. So this one is has an absolute value, and that's what these two little lines are on either side, of you're going to subtract the lesser number from the greater number. Now that's pretty complicated. All you need to do is think, if I'm at negative 4 and I go right three spaces, I end up at negative 1. So I'd like you to stop right now and go ahead and work on numbers 1 through 5. That's going to be your work for the rest of the day. You can either think about counters and money, you can think about a number line and use the number line at the top, or you can think about a thermometer. All right, I'll see you all tomorrow. Have a great afternoon.